When you do know it's not allowed, but still you do it, that's what a demon is. Remember that you always have the power to say no. But the interesting thing is that as soon as you say no, almost immediately the illusion vanishes. There is an incredible amount of forces that try to oppose our spiritual power, but they won't succeed at all if you don't let them. If you feel guilty about a person, it's called working off your karma. This is the voice of the soul, the voice of the conscience. If you have this feeling, a feeling of remorse, then you need to think about it, to reflect, to meditate on it. Good afternoon, Imram. Today we are going to talk about feelings of guilt, difficulties in communicating with loved ones, different states in dreams, and interaction with the subtle astral world. What does it mean if you feel guilty about someone, and what should you do? If you feel guilty about a person, it's called working off your karma. I mean, you already have a sense of conscience, of guilt, you are already tormented. That's exactly the voice of the soul, the voice of conscience. So at that point you will know what to do, either you go and ask for forgiveness, or you do something for that person. If a person mutes the voice of conscience once, twice and then ten times, that voice will eventually disappear. Such people just leave God for they no longer have a sense of conscience. When people have no sense of conscience, they become easy to manipulate because they can't differentiate anymore. It is the sense of conscience in man that is the divine call or voice that indicates that you are doing something wrong. If you have this feeling, a feeling of remorse, then you need to think about it, to reflect, to meditate on it. How do you react when people who are diagnosed with a terminal illness keep telling you that they don't have long to live or talk about suicide? It's a cry for attention. You have to understand that this is manipulation. Older people say, oh, we elderly folk don't have much time left. Just as an example, the most important thing is that you are happy. And at the same time, they express their discontent with everything. They attract attention that way. What might be done about this? Do not encourage this. First, just do not agree with it internally. Birth and death are all in the hands of God, the karmic council, Yamaraja. So you can tell the person, look, you're talking here about what's left, what's not left for you. And how do you know? He will say, the doctors said, but who are the doctors? How do they know? Do you really think doctors created you or gave birth to you and are aware of your life's potential? You came from God, and you will return to God. Do not show that you are reacting to the pity He is trying to evoke. They provoke pity and people fall for it somehow. Your role is to say, God alone knows how long you have left, and your job is to live. You've got a month and a half left? Well, give God a month and a half. They will be totally displeased with what you have to say. They will say, how could you talk like that? I have such a terrible situation, I have a problem and you are just lecturing me. The system will start working differently. They'll be offended, but you shouldn't encourage it all. Or just be silent, ignore it and leave it at that. Then he will try to approach you the other way regarding the issue. They need attention, they need energy, that's vampirism. But you can make that reaction interesting, funny for example. You can say the following, a month and a half? So you've really decided that you have a month and a half left? But that's what the doctors said. The doctors don't know anything. But you believe that? Let's say he would say yes. And you can say, for this month and a half, I'll pray for you. So that when that time comes, at least something will be done for you by someone.
because you don't do anything by yourself. Suicide issues are also manipulation. No one, unless they're crazy and have accidentally done something, would go for something like that. Do you know, how else can a person go insane? The influence of demons, they trigger a person's ego. See, they all hate you. Only you treat them well and everyone loathes you. Do it and you'll punish them. A person just goes mad, gets caught up in this low-frequency influence of the infernal world. And these things happen by accident. Can a person find out by himself that there is a demon inside him? Of course he can. When you know you shouldn't, but you do it anyway, that in itself is a demon. Partly, it's not that he is right inside you, they're around, they may trap you by means of your own attachments. But know that you always have the power to say no. It is you who decides what you will do. Whether you need it or not, you make that decision, not someone else. And when you have compulsive feelings, when you want to do something like, you know, you can't have a candy, but you'll eat it anyway. It's like that. This is how demon feed through you. Someone smokes, can't quit smoking. He says, I can't give up smoking. He's not the one who smokes, it's the demon who smokes through him. It's not him drinking alcohol, it's drinking through him. So anyone, even under the most difficult circumstances, can say no. We always have that power. But the interesting thing is that as soon as you say no, almost immediately the illusion vanishes. It will then go round and try again from the other side after a while. You will say no again. Or enter into practice. The demons work like this. You're tired. You've just got home from work. You still have to practice. But you'd better get some sleep. You would say, I will practice. That's it. Sit down and practice. Even if it is hard for you, at least take five minutes to do something against all the odds. It's up to you to decide. Sure, there are so many forces that try to oppose our spiritual power, but they won't succeed if you don't let them. It is us who allow it. Therefore, a divine cave, a habit not to react, a spiritual practice. As long as you can't control yourself, get emotionally involved, of course, you will find it difficult. If you feel irritated by a situation or people, just get up and leave the place. If you are at home and you want something you shouldn't, and you realize that it is pressuring you, an obsession, as if from within or from somewhere, Get up and leave that room. You just have to get up and leave. Nothing else. They can't rearrange that quickly. You can go out for a walk, take a breath, and then come back in. Then this obsession will be over, for certain. Drink a glass of water, look at the sun, recite a mantra, enter the divine cave. You have a vast amount of options. You can employ them all at once. Lie down horizontally. Drink some water and lie down horizontally. There are all sorts of mystical, magical things that can oppose demons. For example, as I practiced in my time, when thoughts overpower me and I see that they are not my thoughts, they don't give me peace, they don't let me pull myself together. It was back in the 90s, I was still doing Qigong, simple meditation. So I realize it's not me. I'm being influenced, distracted. I realize they need something. Then I say into space, let me do what I want to do now, and later I will do what you want me to do. Nothing else. They're satisfied. We're waiting. Their job is to seduce. If I am willing to do what they want, then consider that 90% success. They receive promotions for that, at that level. I mean it. Naturally, I enter into meditation, and naturally I will never do anything they ask or want. I meditated, got up, and walked away. They were like, hey, and what about... Relax, guys. What should you do if a family member keeps provoking conflicts? Ignore it or pray? First, you should pray for this person to harmonize the process. It often happens that you start praying and the situation gets even worse, because the frequencies are different. There's another point here. You have to understand that the whole world is a mirror. 
If a person treats some other person so maliciously for no apparent external reason, it says that there is something in that person that reflects that. So, we need to review it. When you interact with such people, even if they are very mean as they seem to be, just learn to look into their heart or into their divine cave and realize that there is still God in them. And God is testing you now. Then you will find it easier to endure it all. Or just understand that a grandmother is an older person who has lived her life and she is struggling right now. She may not have been happy with her life, maybe she wanted a different life, and now she's just... I'm just giving an example, or a grandfather, or someone else. For example, let's say she wants a better life for her children, but the way she sees it, it may be a frustration to her that in today's world, young people know better how to live than she does. Well, she lived for something, she's a war veteran after all. I'm just putting the picture together. So your job here is to have compassion. Let her speak out and that's it. Speaking out is good for her. Hear it out, at least pretend you have listened, that you have accepted that. You can thank her, you can apologize, it won't do you any harm. And go back to doing your own thing. Why is it that the naturally kind, sympathetic person is not attracted to spiritual work? Unfortunately, that is not enough. To be a spiritual person, you basically have to be what you just said. It is a universal human condition. It is not something outstanding. For example, dietetics has now become a form of medical treatment. In medicine, it's like a cure. In fact, there should be no concept of cure in dietetics. It's just the right diet that we have to observe. But these days we are so degraded that a good man is now something extraordinary to us. But we're supposed to be all like that. And if we want to achieve something more, then... Is there a mantra to help get out of intense emotional states? That mantra which is worked out by you. That mantra that vibrates within you. For this you need to recite it regularly. When you have the power and habit of reciting a mantra to any outside influence, they cannot even come near you. The mantra creates a protective field. Man is the mind, tra is protection. A mantra is something that protects your mind. Demons work through the mind. Satan resides in the mind. There is nowhere else for him to get into. If you have pure thought, if you are aware of the presence of God, then there is no place for Satan there. When people tell me, there's something going on, I can't figure it out. For some reason, I can't practice. And then there are the vices. What's going on? The person just allowed it to happen. He has embraced the old programs once again and fallen into this hole from which it is harder to climb out. And then they say, Master, help. Okay, I'll help once, twice. But when a person is already speculating or parasitizing on it, of course I won't help anymore. And it's also a help when you're not helping. And you make him go from E to F without a sharp. That applied to me as well. I too needed to use some help sometimes. I also sometimes ask the question, and who is going to help me? But you're the master. Okay, then I'm the master. But I also have my own exams, you see. I should not get too proud here, for I am proud of you all. If I am proud of you, it means I am proud. I say, Baba, see, what great guys I have here. That's it, punk. I'm exaggerating, of course. In the borderline state between sleep and being awake, when the mind is active, what do you do to capture it? If I told you to practice, would that satisfy you? I haven't woken up yet. You'll feel it less and less as time goes on, that's the way it is right now. Don't forget that when you practice, you bring all the debris to the surface. Is that why it's like this? Yes, it's called house cleaning. Remember when there used to be brooms? Yes. <laughs> when you sweep, have you seen how much dust rises in the air? You're gathering a pile of dust here, but actually there's even more flying around. 
So it's okay? Of course it's all right. After a while, it'll just give up. My relative sees dead relatives in her dreams. How can I help her? It's called mediumism. She has that kind of ability. Apparently, she had such practices in some incarnation. Mediumistic abilities or subtle perception or vision, it persists. Her Svaristana, the Muladhara Chakra, is apparently a little punctured. She has to close it, seal it up, then she'll stop seeing them, if it bothers her. It bothers me, is there anything I can do? You can practice and pray for her. Then for your sake, she will get help. She has a bad past, not in this life, not in this incarnation, but a little earlier. There is a connection to the infernal world, that's why she sees them. Think about why she's not seeing angelic beings, they're around too. There's a point to be worked with. On the other hand, she may need it for something. She is working off certain karmic issues of her own. So you have to give her a way out of it. She has to decide for herself whether she will do it or not. Let her read the autobiography of a yogi. Have you read it? Autobiography of a yogi? Yes. There is such a book. Yogananda wrote it. If you want to understand what Kriya Yoga is, you'd better read it. I realize that this is your first time here and you don't know a lot of things yet. And that's okay. I recommend that you read this book and let her read it as well. She might have a lot of changes to make. Then, when she says, I really want to get rid of it, then you can share the 42 Kriyas and this simple concept with her. Better yet, have her come to the seminar. After the seminar, she will stop having this. While energizing sitting down, I get angry at the mind, which chatters a lot. No, you may go on a flight. There are guys here among you who no longer hear me now. They are in flight. This also happens. The thing is, I'm telling you this to work with your subconscious mind. Apart from those pleasant sensations on the surface and the mind's perceptions of beautiful images and joyful phrases that you experience, there is also some inner work, and every word that is spoken gets where it should get. They are vibrations. So no matter what the mind thinks, likes or dislikes, you will get what you are supposed to get. Of course, if you noticed, today's last session we were meditating the whole time. We talked less, because the condition has arisen in everyone, almost everyone. I've had periods when I've seen something, but I scream and get scared when I do. At the same time, I feel protected by someone. What might be done about this? Yes, it's getting noisy for them there too. You just need to deal with your emotions. You need to strengthen your consciousness. Spirituality is not about seeing things. The vision occurs as a side effect. Subtle perceptions become more real. Spirituality is about learning to control feelings, thoughts. When you feel like getting angry, you are actually more or less calm. It's a spiritual state. Spirituality is, at the very beginning, this discourse is about service, about helping. The Creator will do the rest. You don't have to see things. But if you can see it, then it's your attribute. You came here with it. Or it has somehow been awakened because you came here with it. Or it's been there since childhood. Then you either have to turn to God and say, close it, I don't want it, or learn to love those whom you see there. Perhaps they're not pretty, so it seems. But they also want love. They are attracted, they also want to be noticed. Except, of course, for demonic entities. Although, by and large, that's their nature. But then again, why be afraid of them? If you are in a state of unity, of trust, why be afraid of them? What can they do? They can do nothing. The only thing is that they're not very pretty, they scare you. Then you have to control your emotions. Maybe communicate with them more often? Just kidding, don't. Because they will deceive. They are wise, clever, cunning. Not wise, but cunning. 
Those are simpler ones, the elementals. They are called demons in Christianity. They are dim-witted. There's a horde of them out there. They are trying to do something. They are choosing some ways. And these are serious guys. It's better not to deal with them. If you see them, just read a prayer dispassionately. They can't do anything, because you are on the physical plane and they are on the subtle plane. If you are doing out-of-body practices, then they can interact with you. Have you seen the reproduction where the man is dying and there are all these creatures sitting next to him because the dying man is in agony? Why is he starting to tremble? Because he is starting to see it all. His mind is no longer in control. The mind weakens, the consciousness weakens, the subtle body separates, and he is already one foot on the other side, and he's starting to see it all, to see the lower astral plane. That's why they are scared. We need to build up a critical mass of spiritual power in our lifetime such that, when the time comes, you will be at ease, without any difficulties and without someone trying to pull you down. Such a great force will come after you and just take you up. Angels won't let anyone near you. Even if they don't come, you yourself will go to the highest place in the name of the Creator. I'm not telling you specifically now, I'm telling you in general. It's still too early for you. It just takes some adjustment, some understanding, or cessation to close it down. Ask for it to be shut down and that's it, if you don't want to see that. I have a feeling it's been closed down. When was it closed? How long has it been? When I started Kriya? That's right. That's why I've highlighted it for people. This is really so. That's about the time you got it closed, because you've changed frequencies. You are practicing, it's obvious. First of all, you have taken a seminar. Initiation is an additional spiritual power. It proves once again that the seminar has a powerful, in a good way, mystical spiritual energy. Not because it is who we are running it, and we are so good, but because the idea is great. But the fact that we are running it, we are just fulfilling our responsibilities. What should you do if astral beings appear while you sleep and you feel them touching you? I understand. But do you physically feel that you are being touched? Yes. I get sensations on my body. You just have to warn them, say, one who lays his fingers on me will turn up his toes. How to clean the house? There are different ways of cleaning. For example, turn mantras on there all the time so that they play quietly. Just have them playing in the background at least, they do create certain vibrations. Practice regularly. In this room or in the house? Either in this room or in the house. Walk around the corners with a blessed candle, reciting prayers. Because that's where they mostly accumulate like dust. There are different ways to do this. These are the simplest rudimentary ones you are capable of doing. Do you need to light incense? Yes, sure. But incense, of course, they don't like the pleasant smell, they can't stand it. This is why incense is included. But they don't always work. We were talking about Vastu. When a house is properly, harmoniously made, this entity will not come in. Because it is affected by higher frequencies, it will be uncomfortable. But about a house build in any which way and by whomever. And also, God forbid, if someone has died or been cursed there, you can't live in this house, you have to leave. When we buy a second-hand property or a house, we don't even know what happened there. You told us not to do pranayamas when we are under a lot of stress. How do we know when we may do them? When you can't pull yourself together, when you're sitting and you just have this event in front of you and you can't breathe, you can't concentrate, the usual mode that you do easily doesn't happen. That is, you can't do the breathing, you're flailing back and forth. Of course you can't do it at that time. After a while, a day or two, you'll calm down, then you can start, give it a try. If it comes up again, by and large, it all has to come out of the subconscious. 
It will manifest itself until you have processed the stress. It can be worked out this way. Or like this, as I told you. Understand what is going on, accept the situation now that it has already happened. You can try, but since you feel like you're having a hard time and there's no proper focus, no sense of relative calm, you have to wait a little longer. You need more 42 Kriyas. By the way, when you do energizing sitting and standing, stress goes away quickly. Power appears. In a most surprising way, the understanding emerges that all the darkness is not worth the trouble. What is sleep paralysis? How do you cope with it? It's when you're not yet in the astral plane, but you're not in the physical plane anymore either. And the body freezes. It's a good, very good condition. You're choking, aren't you? No, not necessarily. You can suffocate in fear, it happens. Sleep paralysis, when the body is immobilized because you are already sort of in the astral plane, but not yet fully asleep. This is a good opportunity, a phase where you can program yourself, reprogram yourself. Get rid of some things that you don't need, that are bothering you, or learn something. Must one request this? No, you're just processing, learning to think about it, to reflect on it. It's not that one must make a request, it is to analyze it. You are both awake and asleep already, and you analyze this situation. You set yourself an attitude, for example. I am in control of my emotions. Actually, this is Kriya Nidra. It's the same as Kriya Nidra, only you go into it consciously, relax completely, and work with your subconscious mind. Is Kriya Nidra a conscious dream as well? Of course, yes. But through the spiritual plane, not through the lower centers. You cannot enter the high spiritual world if you are not spiritual. Therefore, consciousness requires transformation. Then you're on the heart center. Master Jesus came with this very idea for man to anchor himself in this place. It's a symbol of love. Once you're anchored, you won't go down. Your evolution won't go down. And here you can roll down, climb up, etc. If you don't get a foothold here, you can also slide down. But once you get it, that's it. That's why exits from the body or entrances into a spiritual state are different things. Leaving the body through the chakras is spiritualism, where we have conjunction with the infernal world of lower vibrations. Spiritual practice, where you enter the realm of the divine cave consciously, is an entrance into the spiritual world. This is exactly the gate through which you pass consciously, and there, there are completely different perceptions.